Hi everyone, I hope you're all having an amazing day. This video is gonna be another educational macro episode. I haven't done one of those for a while. I finally managed to capture some really cool and detailed shots of an iridescent cuckoo wasp at the local nature reserve. I had been trying for quite some time and I finally got lucky and I can't wait to show you those. All of the pictures were taken with the Canon R7 and the Laowa 90mm 2x ultra macro lens. By the way, if you're new to my channel and you are like me and you like learning about interesting species, you might also want to check out this playlist after this video. Anyway, let's get started. This first species is a tiny, really weird, quirky looking parasitoid wasp I found in our garden. Apparently it parasitizes small scale insects called mealybugs. I had never seen such huge and wide antennae on a parasitoid wasp in relation to the size of its body. Our second subject is a square-headed wasp that was resting on a dry stem. Square-headed wasps are solitary wasps that use their impressive jaws to make nests in the ground, in hollow stems and in old tunnels chewed in wood by beetle larvae. Solitary wasps typically create an egg chamber and stuff killed, stunned or stung spiders or other small insects into it. The female lays an egg on the paralyzed body, closes the chamber up and moves on. The carnivorous larva then hatches out into its own personal pantry, stocked with enough food to reach the pupil stage. Our next subject is what I'm really stoked about. This is a cuckoo wasp that was searching for a potential host on the bark of a large eucalypt. I have spotted this species there a number of times before. The term cuckoo wasp refers to the cuckoo-like way in which wasps in the family lay eggs in the nests of unrelated host species. They are most diverse in desert regions of the world, as they are typically associated with solitary bee and wasp species, which are also most diverse in such areas. They have flattened or concave lower abdomens, which allows them to curl into a defensive ball when attacked by a potential host. This mechanism is called bovation. They fly mainly in the hottest and driest months of summer, preferring subtropical and Mediterranean climates. They favor dry areas and sandy soils. Each species is confined to a narrow type of microhabitat, where adults may rest or find hosts to parasitize, for example on bare soil or on dead wood, where other solitary wasps have their nest holes. The amazing iridescent metallic sheen of their body is caused by the so-called structural coloration. It is the production of color by microscopically structured surfaces, fine enough to interfere with visible light instead of pigments. The following image is of a yellow-shouldered ladybird, a very small species that is a predator of aphids, mostly of milkweed aphids. The next couple of shots are of a really cool looking spider, a long-jawed ore beaver. Long-jawed spiders are also known as four-jawed spiders. This spider builds a small horizontal or inclined ore web, which is about 20 centimeters in diameter. The spider is light yellow to white in color with very long and thin legs. They are usually found next to the water. They build their webs at night and rest on leaves during the day. This one was resting on vegetation at the local wetlands. Not so far from that location, I also spotted a leaf curling spider with its prey. The leaf curling spider is a common Australian spider found in woodlands and urban areas in the eastern and southern states. They are diurnal orb weavers and they protect themselves from predators by sitting inside their silk seamed curled leaf. The leaf is suspended just above the center of the web of this particular species but may be placed higher in other species. Such leaves may be already part curled, though many are not, and the spider pulls and silks its leaf into a retreat cylinder, silked shut at the top and open at the hub. The main food source is flying insects, including insects larger than itself, such as this moth that was at least twice as large as the predator. They are noted for their sexual cohabitation and its function in mate guiding behavior. This means that the male and female live together in the same curled leaf, occupying opposite ends of the retreat with the female at the open end. This next species is a leaf-footed bug. Amorbus is a genus of true bugs in the family of leaf-footed bugs. They are diurnal as well, so they are only active during the day. There are about 15 described Australian species of this genus, and all of them are associated with eucalyptus, hence their common names of eucalyptus tip bug or eucalyptus tip builder bug. 
the nymph, which is the juvenile stage of the amorbus, undergoes stages of molting the skin, this process is referred to as an instar, these instars can have some dramatic color changes, which can make them look like completely different species. They have tube mouth parts, which they insert into the stems of the eucalypt leaves to suck the sap. A next tiny subject is a leaf beetle that I spotted in our backyard on the fig tree. Leaf beetles are one of the largest families with 37,000 described species. They feed on plant tissue and many of them are recognized as serious agricultural pests of cultivated plants. This species is quite small. The specimen in this picture was less than 5 mm in length. These following shots are of a citrus whitefly ladybird. This small, shiny black ladybird is endemic to Australia, but has been introduced to New Zealand as well. The adults are tiny, less than 3 mm long. Both the adult and larval ladybirds eat psyllids, whitefly and probably other insects and gall mites. I have seen the damage that gall mites do, but haven't been able to photograph them, as they are 0.15 mm in length. The jaws are the primary structures used for holding and chewing the prey. Legs do not appear to be used for holding food. This next spider species is a typical orb beaver. Orb beaver spiders are the most common group of builders of spiral wheel-shaped webs, often found in gardens, fields and forests. The English word orb can mean circular, hence their name. They have eight similar eyes, hairy and spiny legs. Many orb beavers build a new web each day, most of them tend to be active during the evening hours and they hide for most of the day. Generally, towards evening, the spider consumes the old web, rests for about an hour, then spins a new web in the same general location. That is why the webs of orb beavers are generally free of the accumulation of detritus common to other species such as the black widow spider. I captured two different specimens on two occasions, one was resting on a fig leaf and I spotted the other one on our outdoor table. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to identify the exact species yet. Our next subject might be familiar to you. It is a very colorful, iridescent, long-legged fly. These small flies have large, prominent compound eyes, long legs and a metallic cast to their appearance. Most adults are predatory on other small animals, though some may scavenge or act as kleptoparasites of spiders or other predators. This species was approximately 6 mm in length and was rather difficult to capture, as they are very skittish when approached. The adults are predators, feeding on small invertebrates, including springtails, also known as columbula, aphids and the larvae of terrestrial and aquatic worms. Our second last subject is a really cool looking ant species. Rhytidopanera is a large genus of ants that is endemic to Australia, Melanesia and New Caledonia. I found this specimen close to the ground on a small shrub and I think it was feeding on plant sap or some sort of excretion. Our very last subjects are jumping spiders. The first one is a female white banded house jumper that was resting on a leaf of our Swiss cheese plant. I was really happy with this frame and these following images were of an even smaller specimen, a garden jumping spider which had captured a tiny prey, most likely a non-biting midge. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe for more, also let me know in the comments below which image or images were your favorite. Have a good one and see you all very soon in the next video.